Other rappers is delirious. Yeah, it's really that serious. Better holla if you really feeling me. I gotta keep it a hundred. Ayy, if you don't like it, then fuck it. Ayy, we gonna win in the end. Yeah, we gonna live in abundance. I gotta keep it a hundred. Ayy, if you don't like it, then fuck it. Ayy, we gonna win in the end. Yeah, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna. I gotta keep it a hundred. We gotta stop all the stunting. You know we coming from nothing. Yo, you talking about money, you bluffing. We gotta do something different. We gotta change how we live in. We gotta do better for women. We gotta do better for children. We gotta listen to victims, whether Jewish or Muslim or Christian. It doesn't matter your religion. You gotta stand against the system, or else you're just another villain. How you just sitting there chilling? Uh, hello, everyone in the music airwaves and Spotify, all platforms, wherever you get your podcasts and music from. My name is Jamal Jabari, and we have another guest. Uh, you may have recognized her from last season, um, and she is what with, she was with a uh, friend for a friend podcast, um, and she is also a musician. So, yeah. had to bring her back on. You already know how I do. I always do about the music, and I heard her music in. I was like, wow, uh, Neo Soul? It, are we hinting that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, that's what I call it now because I never really knew what genre to, to put on my music. And people always, when I would tell people I'm a singer, they'd be like, oh, what do you sing? And I'm like, I don't know. I just freaking sing. Like, right, So right. I, I found the term Neo Soul and I was like, seems legit. It kind yeah. of is everything. So I was like, yeah. Yeah, Neo Soul. Uh, it was a great era. Of course, you already know in the nineties and stuff like that. Especially that's I'm just going by the nineties because that's and where I'm I got very most of my... heavily. I'm heavily like nineties influenced. I'm a not. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> you can't really help it. Who are your top? So who who would you? So in the neo soul genre, who are your tops that you in still the listen neo to? Soul genre. Yeah. Well, I feel like the neo soul genre is 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 kind of very broad. So for me, I the reason I say that I'm a neo soul singer is because it's really just like a modern day um it's not even altogether soul. It's just like a modern day like artist that is very heavily R&B, soul, jazz type yep. influences. So for me, I feel like I'm really influenced by like I said 90s type stuff. So I always I literally, I still to this day want to be the fourth member of Destiny's Child. That's just, <laughs> I'm just manifesting my own destiny. I would love to be the fourth member of Destiny's Child. Um, who else? I don't know. There's so many people, even like older people like Etta James. I really, really love mm. Dorothy Moore, like mm. like old school type type singers. So for mm. me, it, it's, I don't really always go by artists. I go by a song. I, okay. I get connected to songs more than I get connected to artists. That's dope. That really is dope because that's literally what nerds will be like. Yo, I know everything about this one, <laughs> and yeah. there's only that many that people actually know everything about. But when it, you get to a, the craft of other artists, you're like, oh, yeah, I somebody I don't know about them. Like, god damn, it. yeah, and you're like, <laughs> expert on this person, but it's like you're never gonna be the expert on that person. Even people like Melanie Fiona, and I even grew up like those are like the more soulful type artists. I even. I learned to play the guitar because the Jonas Brothers played the guitar. And I was like, well, if I want to sing Jonas Brothers songs, I have to play the guitar. So right. I, Disney, like, I, I grew up on all that type of stuff. So that's my influence. Like, right. people like that. Right. It, I, did get a, I, did, I did get a vibe, though, um, with, with, with um, your song. Um, I just realized I'm going to have to edit this. I didn't <laughs> switch that. Jesus Christ. Wow. All right. No, I put music by from the um, the intro, but now we have to switch for the song pressure and everything. I apologize. We're going to fix that no, later. Okay. Um, but furthermore, um, Disney has hits. <laughs> I totally get you. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, the Kanto shit alone right now. Like, I was like, all right. <laughs> a whole other generation. And you remember you used to have Disney radio? Yeah. I used to go to sleep. I would turn my TV on to Disney radio and just cover the screen so that the light wouldn't shine. And right, I would right. go to sleep listening to just like Disney soundtracks. Like 
it was serious. No, so, yeah. It's, yeah, you still can't get rid of it. I just turned 30. I'm already like, sometimes live, I hum some Disney songs in my head. It's like, live by no, <laughs> no, I live by Disney. Like, even people like um, Ashley Tisdale, which is like, no one really pays her any mind, but she has some hits. <laughs> she, she had some hits on Disney. <laughs> Low key, I even used to be a really big fan of Miley Cyrus. Mm-hmm. Um, and Taylor Swift, too. She's not like a Disney person, but even her, like, I used to, man, yeah. if I could play it on the guitar, man, I was, yeah, yeah. it was me. So you have a lot of influences because those are all two different, like not even just two, like few different type of like styles they play, even being under Disney and stuff like that. Yeah, that's um, why it's always tricky when people say like, "Oh, what are you sing?" or like, "What kind of music do you make?" I'm like, man, yeah. I don't, know, I don't even know what to call it. Well, you chose the right, uh, the right genre was singing Neil Soul because I kind of had that feeling off of with it too. I agree. As long as that's. Yeah. It's it's helpful to actually hear from you right now that so you picked that up before me actually saying neo soul were you just getting a neo soul vibe or was it like oh that's what yeah, you're yeah. so what I was going to say is that you kind of sound you kind of remind me a little bit of like a mix between Erica Badu or G, and uh, Jill Scott like Those for uh, really the pressure funny. yeah In when pre- I thought about neo soul that's what I think about mostly like Jill Scott yeah, and Erica yeah. Badu like. The gods. Yeah, those are like <laughs> the goddesses. Oh, yeah, like the queen of Neo Soul. That's so yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's like it's like pop music, but like with some bass in in, in your voice. You know what I'm saying? Like right, right, right. I don't even know yeah. how to explain it, but yeah. And then the essence from before, um, <laughs> like before, like in like back in the day, like the '60s, like James Cook, not James Cook. So. I said James. Who the hell is James? Oh, James Cook was a colonizer. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not talking about James Cook. I'm talking about <laughs> Sam Cook. My bad. I'm sorry, Sam, Sam Cook. I'm sorry. That makes a lot more sense. He's a wrong James person. Colonizer. Sam Cook was not neo soul artist. I mean, he was not a soul artist at all. He was more like rock and roll. Who am I thinking about right now? I can't. See. Sam Smith. No. Oh, I Jesus love- Christ. Sam oh, Smith well, is now. <laughs> He's a very modern artist, but I actually I love him as well. Like I I, I might edit this out, but I might not. It's kind of hilarious because I'm trying to figure out who I'm talking about right now. It, as soon as you get off, you'll be like, "That's what I was trying to say." All right, you know what? For people that listen to me, you know I know what I'm talking about, and that sounds very <laughs> dumb what I just said. So whatever, whatever. Okay. Anyway, we'll anyway, it. like um, Otis. There we go. Otis Redding, like type of like soul came from that, and then it came to the 90s and stuff like that and then you know your song gave me that vibe um actually let's play one of your songs let's actually play yeah. pressure since we were talking about it oh well, yeah let's play pressure i, I just had a whole brain fart like it's i'm kind of mad about that You're somebody's crazy. gonna hear that that no. like especially some a musician i know is gonna hear that be like this motherfucker was talking about be like really soul music and he listened he mentioned fucking james cook james the colonizer cook. there he goes they're gonna be like this dude don't know what he's talking about <laughs> Yeah, a buggy. I'm sorry. I'm a little high. <laughs> We're good though. All right. Yes. Let's play let's play your song pressure. Yeah, let's play pressure. I love this song. Uh, it's I'm very biased, but I just love this song a lot. I got I'm going to tell you about why I like this song so much. I'm going to tell you. Yeah, give me all your feedback. I w- I'm actually in the process of remastering this song for Early um work. Mm-hmm. Cause I mixed and mastered both of these tracks actually that you're looking at, and I have an EP coming and I want to I want to just fix some stuff. But so it'll be Word. bigger. Okay, yo, we going actually we're gonna talk about that, especially that. Uh, wait, why is it not playing? Okay, here we go. I don't know. It's just it's hard. Take that pressure off, yeah You can't seem to handle all this weight I'm pressing on, yeah 
Let's get it right. You seem stronger from a distance. Now I'm facing some resistance, and I'm slowly losing patience. So yeah. Oh, so let me take that pressure off ya. Yeah. Now relax your shoulders. Go and sit down. Get comfortable. Well, tell me how's that for you? If you can't take the heat. Go on, man, I'm saying that you're weak Cause I ain't gonna beg for you I asked for you once and now Boy, I'm calling you bluff, that's enough So you ain't gotta worry about me Baby, you ain't gotta worry about a thing Baby, who knew that you fought under pressure, pressure But you ain't gotta worry, I won't let you, let ya Focus on yourself, it's all good Baby, you ain't gotta stress, you're off the hook Baby, who knew that you fought under pressure, pressure But you ain't gotta worry, I won't let you, let ya No pressure, pressure, no pressure, pressure Can I say I'm not surprised, surprised. No, that you were going through me right, right. Yeah. That you was open but you lied Why you lie? oh, You're out of sight, you're out of mind You fooled me once, you fooled me twice Yeah, You fooled me once too many times yeah. A big man, but you can't play nice So baby, let me be polite so you ain't gotta worry about me What you worry You ain't gotta worry about a thing What you worry Who knew that you fought under pressure? But you ain't gotta worry, I won't let you let ya Focus on yourself, it's all good Baby, you ain't gotta stress, you're off the hook It's stop Who knew that you fought under pressure? But you ain't gotta worry, I won't let you let ya no pressure, pressure Pressure, pressure, pressure. I'ma worry about me. Yeah, and I'ma be alright. I guarantee. Yeah, so you can feel free to take a back seat. Me, myself, and I is all I need. You ain't gotta worry about me. Baby. You ain't gotta worry about a thing. Baby. Who knew that you fall under pressure? pressure. But you ain't gotta worry. I won't let you let ya. Focus on yourself is all good. Baby. You ain't gotta stress. You off the hook. You fall under pressure, pressure. But you ain't gotta worry, I won't let you. Don't worry about pressure, 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 pressure. You ain't gotta worry about me. You ain't gotta worry about me. No, no, no. Ain't gotta worry about me. Ain't gotta worry. That's pressure. Yo, okay. So I just read your bio on that Spotify thing. <laughs> <laughs> Since we had some time. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, okay. You had some performances. Uh that was <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. even that. I didn't know that you produced your own music and it said it in your bio actually you said it earlier. So that's a whole other level for me. A whole other piece. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course that is. You know, because like <laughs> I I do not you I do not recommend you um producing and, and mixing and all that stuff for yourself unless you are like really dedicated because wow. <laughs> It takes so much. I don't think I realized what I was getting into. And now I'm in too deep. I can't stop. So, oh, yeah. So like rewarding. Crap. You have so much control over like what your music sounds like. I can only imagine. I don't produce for myself. So I can only imagine how that is. The time. And, like, Jesus Christ. Like, it, why do you think Kanye crazy? I just quoted logic. <laughs> <laughs> will make you a little crazy you know i he thinks he's a god now with all this like he's, you know what you know what you have to give kanye his props but at the same time it's two it's like two sides of a coin like right on one side you're like he's a genius and on the other side you're like yeah. he's too genius for his own good like yeah 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 like that's those say like producing is a whole nother level producing for yourself like it's a lot. Eric yeah. is uh, the lead singer in our band, and he produces our music as well, too, while I run the label. And I can only imagine how he feels 24-7. Like, it's like just, a psychopath, I'm... probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit crazy. Like, you, you're just kind of like, why am I doing this? But then you're like, 
I'm already here. Like I can't, right. I can't stop now. So let's go from the beginning real quick. How did you get into music? Like, how did you get into like, so do you like, how many instruments do you know? <laughs> I know one instrument. So, oh, okay, there we go. So I grew up playing the violin and I was actually really good at the violin, but at some point I stopped and, you know, when you're, when you're too young and you stop, you just kind of never pick it back up. So that was like my first introduction to playing um, music. And then, like I said, I learned about the Jonas Brothers. So then I was like, well, I need a guitar. So that's when I started. So I'm self-taught on the guitar just because I wanted to play Jonas Brothers songs. And then um, I can play chords on the keyboard. Like if I had to play something for myself real quick or just like track something really quick, I can do that. And I've also, um, when college, I also took a piano course. So I can... I can kind of do enough for me to build chords for myself or play something so that I can produce. But like, if I was going to go on stage, I'm not taking a key. I'm taking my guitar or I'm just going to go up by myself. <laughs> so I only play, I only play one instrument in real life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause, um, like I've noticed that a lot of people that can engineer, especially for people, I'm one thing I, that intrigues me about this is just that, like a lot of people don't know about how many great musicians write hip hop beats. Yeah. Like, like Zaytona for like I'm gonna mention Zaytona for instance. Like he, he's mostly known for his Gucci, but he also has done for so many other artists and stuff like that. And Zaytona you he learned off of like correct me if I'm wrong if anybody that knows more about Zaytona. But from what I heard, that he learned off of just playing church organs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like his family's very religious, stuff like that. You know what? A lot of really talented <laughs> musicians come out of the church. And I yeah. see why. Oh, yes, they do. There's so much improvisation that comes from playing church music because at any point in time, you can break out into like song and dance and you just kind of go and it's the perfect time to just get practice in so that makes a lot of sense and you're right a lot of people who produce like they play a lot of instruments i think sometimes especially when you hear like hip-hop music or even trap music especially uh the yeah, assumption yeah. is that like this didn't really take much thought right because sometimes it can sound so simple that you're like i could yeah. That's and, where I'm getting at at. And they don't realize yeah. that these people know music theory. Like music, <laughs> music theory in this that you have no idea what music theory even is. But yeah. it's like it just comes out too simple for them. It's just like, oh, all yeah. you do is just eh, 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 eh. you would think that's but, all you did. You <laughs> think that you're not even hearing that you're hearing, right, or there's right. like stuff happening that you don't even realize is happening. That's like there's some advanced preach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like 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 Dre, for instance, like the way he plays the keys and stuff He's like that. It's like, too. oh my god. <sighs> yeah, and I've noticed, and I mean, this makes sense. A lot of people who are um, producers they play keys, which is like kind of makes perfect sense. Yeah, I feel like that's the harmony. That's the like heart of like getting out perfect music and stuff like that. You gotta have like, some idea of of keys at least the, at least the bare minimum you had a, you gotta at least know how to build some chords so that you yeah. can start somewhere yeah. so yeah I, I think that's something a lot of people don't realize is like there's there's levels to this like there's so, there's so you know stuff. music you can read music notes you can read chords you don't you don't have to just depend on tabs with your guitar oh if i'm playing if i'm playing chords or something i'm not doing tabs i'm doing chords like if i was gonna um read music like if i was playing a song i would look at chords you know what i mean oh, okay gotcha. like tabs is too much to think about while you're in the middle of trying to sing and play at the same time I yeah but the crazy part is i know so many great guitarists that don't that can't even read music they just know tabs and then other great really? guitarists are like oh i just read music like yeah like like eric for instance i have to bring him up again he's a fucking great guitarist like yeah and he only reads tabs he can't read music and i'm just See, like it what <laughs> it really all depends on how you start because that yeah. foundation is really what takes you i think i kind of got lucky because i started off playing the violin so you have to read sheet music to play yeah. you have to literally sight read as you play the violin right and then um also with singing when i was in college you're also sight singing so you're yeah. reading music as you sing so that is a little bit more um because of like other things but if mm -hmm. I'm playing the guitar, I'm just either playing it by ear or I'm playing by like looking at what is the chord. I'll just play the chord because mm -hmm. 
I think it just really depends on how you initially learned. And it's so hard to like now unlearn how you learned and start yeah. doing something different. But yeah. hey, if great music comes out at the end of it. It's like, who cares Always. how you get there? Yeah. yeah. And it's fire because it's like, you're, you don't need anybody else. Like, bitch, I can do this by myself. Like, I would. It's so, I would love. <laughs> I'm so annoying. I, if I could, I don't know. I play the guitar from when I perform. I bring my guitar and I play for myself. But any mm. chance that I have to not have to play for myself, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'll have somebody play for me just because, like, there's more thinking involved when you have to play for yourself and sing. Yeah. Like, you have to remember chords now. So you're just like, yeah. Takes a little bit more thought, but yeah, it's really, um, it really comes in handy when you have the ability to accompany yourself. So you don't have to rely on other people. You can just kind of wing it. It's, it's, I recommend yeah. you just know how to do something for yourself. Right, right, right. Yeah. I play percussion instruments, but I would need to like, to produce myself, I would need to like actually learn like music notes and stuff like that. Like. And I was just, you know, like, that's just, that's just dope. Like, people are special that are able to do that by themselves. You know what I mean? Cause it's such There's, a crazy ass world. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's so much, you can learn all that stuff on YouTube. Honestly, there's so much yeah. on the internet now that it's just like, you can really God, do whatever. Like, damn it, YouTube. I love YouTube. <laughs> It's a gift and a curse because there's there's a lot you can learn on YouTube, but then you get to a point where it's like, dang, I kind of need to talk to a real person to learn this. <laughs> it's just like some things you just can't YouTube. I taught but, myself how to play percussion instruments at first really? on YouTube before I found a teacher. Yeah, See, you started on YouTube. It's yeah. it's so weird, but it's just so it's so effective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely vibe with you on that. Like it literally like maybe to like be able to play and be around places and stuff but that's crazy yeah. youtube can literally teach you a lot of things yeah and then once you get to a certain level it's like all right i should probably seek help like i <laughs> should probably talk to a professional well moving on you you did the bijou and the bijou is like yeah. one of the best stages to be in it's bridgeport so um, yeah. yeah i have done um i did a play there and really the band i was in um did it there too um it's it's a beautiful spot. I love it. Yeah. I always have a good time whenever I go there. Mm -hmm. um, how was that? How how was it for you? Was that your first time? Um, that was my first time at the Bijou. Mm -hmm. I've never, I'd never even been inside the Bijou Theater before. Like, and I went to yeah. school in in Bridgeport for four years, and I never mm -hmm. even really knew it was there. So mm -hmm. I was at the Bijou for an event called Pitch My Song, which is basically like where artists come and they. Um, perform their their one original song and you get like some advice from professionals that are in the industry mm -hmm. and they just kind of give you some guidance on like what are you doing and how do you mm -hmm. do it so that was really cool and we did pressure mm -hmm. and i had um my backup singer alicia and i had um on keys gregory hunt which i'm sure some of you might have heard of them before because they're like a big deal Lord. but <laughs> <laughs> so that was really dope and yeah, it was really well received and I was excited. And that was my first time performing Pressure live. I can't wait to do Pressure with a full band because it's a song that needs a full band so it can be like really big, like how it's supposed to be. But it was it was really cool. Oh, I would oh. definitely, yeah, I would definitely go to the Bijou again. That was exciting. So it was kind of like American Idol, but like low-key American oh. Idol in a way. Like, like I never heard of this. This is interesting. It's like low-key a I, I don't want to say it's a talent show. It's like a showcase kind of because it's like you don't really win anything. So it's not like American Idol where it's like you pick who was the best and like you win something. But it was mm -hmm. very much like if you have original music and maybe you're not as comfortable with performing or maybe you're kind of new to the scene, this is probably a good place to be because people are really just here to hear your original song and say, okay, great. That was a great job. But also the advice that you get from it, like it was split into two. So the first portion, first portion of it was just hearing from people on how to publish your music and like what to look out for. And it, so that stuff was really good information. So I kind of took notes and then I performed. Mm -hmm. So it was like a win-win type of situation. And That's also networking. Yeah. 
Wow. wow. Very, very cool. Did not know something like that exists. I didn't either. <laughs> and I have um, a cousin who also makes music. And I was like, you should, next year, you should probably do this because it's it's kind of a, a great a great opportunity to just get yourself out there. Yeah. So I was That's dope. Well, shouts out to to them for doing some shit like that. That's really right. Cool. Very cool. Everything. Did you have a photographer with you as well, or they had their own photographer? They had a photographer, and he was very efficient because he was going around just kind of taking candid pictures and, of course, taking pictures on stage. And within, like, the next day or two, we already had, like, everything sent to our email, and it was kind of just scroll through and take all your photos, and you can do what, what you want. It, wow. was really, it was really cool. That's he bad. She sent us an email. She's like, oh, here are the pictures for the event. And it was like two days later. And it's just like, wow, you don't have to pay for these or anything. It's just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> like free content. It's like, oh, okay. God. Yeah, that's dope. When you, when you get like some free stuff like that, that's dope, man. I was like, wow, this is, I mean, I gave him photo credit, but I was like, well, this was a win-win-win situation. <laughs> it was, it was, it was really cool. So yeah. shout out to Pitch My Song, um, hosted by Marisol. That was, she was really dope. Yeah. And you, what are you working on? Are you working on anything else now? Are you, are you start, uh, I have to ask this since oh. you're producing your own, are you starting your own label or anything? <laughs> technically, I already have one because if you're going to put out music, it has to be under something. Yeah. So I call it um, TK Publishing Co., which is just me. <laughs> and then um also studio 13 entertainment my birthday's may 13th i was born on friday the 13th i just feel like that's a lucky number so i'm under studio mm -hmm. 13 entertainment um but yeah so i've been working on my ep right after i finished pressure mm -hmm. i put that out in september i think i gave myself like a month or two to just <laughs> just decompress because pressure took a lot and then um i went into just being creative. So I just started producing a lot. I wasn't really aiming for anything. I just started making whatever beats could come to mind. Also learning too, because I'm still very new at producing. It's only been a year for me. So I started going through that learning process. And then the songwriting would naturally come, which songwriting is really my favorite thing to do. And then from there, I recorded. I built a whole studio behind this wall. There's a studio in a room back there um, where I record myself. And yeah, so I would say we've got about three or four songs pretty much finished. Two songs that have not been recorded yet, but I'm working on it. And um, and then, yeah, then we, they just have to go through the mastering process. So we're working. So I'm aiming for August, September. I want summer, so we'll see. August, September, word, word. We'll see, hopefully, because I want people to be able to, like, put it, play it in the car and, like, drive down the highway and, you know yeah. what I'm saying, vibe out. So hopefully I can meet that that goal. We'll see. Word, 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 word. You mentioned that it took a lot with pressure. It wasn't just producing it or was it, like, any like any, anything you went through that <laughs> you wanted to, you know what I mean? I went through a mental <laughs> breakdown. No, so, <laughs> because, so because I knew I wanted it to be a real, I wanted it to be big and I wanted to have a build up, but I'm I'm a new producer, so I didn't know how to do it. And the first song that I put out was a really calm song. Like it didn't really take too much. Like it was just kind of like me practicing. Mm -hmm. So for pressure, I really didn't want to put it out until I got it to a place where I was really satisfied with it. So that took a lot of like, okay, let me try this. That didn't work. Let me go look it up and see how to do that. Okay, now let me do that. That worked. Let me look up and see how. So it was like learning as you're producing. So maybe uh... that's what that was the process. That's it, dope. Now that I and then I had to get another laptop. It was like a whole a whole thing. But even now, yeah, it was. You had to buy a new laptop. It was, it was so dramatic because my computer was like, "What you're trying to do? Like, we don't have the capacity for this." <laughs> Which it was time anyway. So um, yeah, even now with looking at pressure, my 
I'm more advanced now than I was then. So that's why I said I'm in the process of remastering it and remixing it. It's like, there's things that I still would want to fix. The first song I put out, I'm like, I don't care what, I don't care. But this mm -hmm. one, since I love pressure so much, I'm like, ah, I just feel like it could be even better. So I'm going to work on it again and put that on the EP as well. So yeah, pressure was, um, I can't even tell you how many times I've heard that song. Like a lot, of, <laughs> like a lot of times. So it's Word. like having a baby. You just kind of, you hate it, but you just still put <laughs> the time and the love and the effort into it. Until, yeah. You know, you, you got, you, you literally, literally, it takes a lot and it's good to just focus on one joint and not do too much, you know, because yeah. like you could just drive yourself crazy and and you will yes it's a different market we talk about it all the time in this podcast actually when when when, when we're not talking about politics we're talking about this a lot mentioning it 24 7 how like important it is to like just bring out one and building that one if you want to just you don't have to like yeah. just people that spent five years on getting your song you know, and stuff like that and it actually benefits yeah. them and if it doesn't it doesn't but it shows the work yeah it's a lot of work in it now <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fine line between like put all your time and effort into this one thing so that you can yeah. focus and then like at some point let it go because it's never going to be perfect so it's yeah. just like you got to decide like when is enough enough but then right. like when is enough not quite good enough like when could you possibly like do a little bit more so at some point you got to let it go Mm -hmm. Which apparently I still haven't let it go because I thought I let it go, but now I'm like, no, I'm fixing it and I'm gonna put it out again. So yeah, do it. I, yeah, I mean, hey, Yo, we really released the album that had nine different versions of the same song. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what? Wait, I'm just trying to encourage y'all out here. Y'all think I'm playing? This is called practice. <laughs> so what were the different? <laughs> did you put out nine different versions of the same song oh well it was eric's crazy idea you know he's such a he's a, he's fucking uh clever so we we made this song and it's called one i play it a lot um actually on the outro usually be on the intro but now it's on the outro now mm -hmm. and like you know we dropped the music video and stuff like that and then ended up like also working with people all around the world, but dope. but that not in like Asia or anything like um, Africa and Latin America and then here and stuff like that. Yeah. So we had nine different versions. We had somebody from Ethiopia, and oh. you know, it was uh, it was crazy. That's really cool, though. I'm sure yeah. it was. I'm sure it probably made him a little bit nuts, but that's really cool. <laughs> He's always nuts. Eric, yeah, I'm just playing if you hear this. <laughs> <laughs> We're all cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Okay. Yeah, kind of got to be, you know? What is sanity? That's honestly. what I'm saying. I, I, I'm not a normal person, and that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, seriously. Who wants to be normal? Yeah, I've been got over that. It is what it is. It sounds disgusting being normal. What is that like? Do I have an alien head and alien body? And I just I don't I'm I joking. mean there's no there's really no like normal. It's just kind of not anymore, not in 2022 at least. We're all a little too um woke. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that woke this bit. I have so much to say about that, but I will leave that alone because <laughs> So other conversation. Elon Musk had to buy Twitter, and that was crazy. But I would talk to? about that. I would talk about that later, guys. <laughs> I just want to know: Did he have to? But well, okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll tune. Actually, actually, I'll talk about that on Tuesday when I go on Tommy Nation politics. I'm gonna bring that up. Because it's, it's such a. I mean, <laughs> I don't even use Twitter, so I'm kind of like I don't care. But it's also like, what are y'all doing? Deal. It's crazy. Yeah. I just want to know what's going on over there, but whatever. that motherfucker is so rich that he got tired of the BS on Twitter that he bought it. <laughs> I'm, gonna buy, I'm gonna buy the social media. I'm gonna just buy it. Like I've okay. heard of, he literally just bought Twitter. Like it's a it's, big deal. And it's weird because if you think about it, like what it, do we even know what a privately owned social media platform looks like? I feel like Facebook. 
that that's what it is. Was well, I guess Facebook is privately owned. Yeah, they say it. They say they're privately owned. They're in their dicks. It's just I don't know. Whatever. I don't use Twitter. Whatever happens over there, yeah, good luck. Yeah. With everything. Good luck. Yo, it's gonna be lit. That's all I gotta say. It's I don't wanna say too all. much. It's I could just now, but hey, that's what he wanted to do. Wow, wow, Wes is going so down. Wow, wow, Wes. It's an way to spend your money, but it's not my money. So what can I say, bro? But it's just, it's just great. It's just great to hear some shit like that because I can laugh hard. I like, I like laughing at real life things. Yeah, because you know why? Because it's not. It shouldn't be funny. Like some of the stuff. Like, oh, this is real life. Like you, y'all gotta chill. Out. Sometimes you like y'all playing like this is Monopoly. Like, what are you doing? But I don't know. I feel like in 2022, at this point, we don't take nothing seriously. Nah. And at Not some really. point, that'll be a problem for us. But <laughs> what are you going to do? All what right. Back do? to the music. Right, right. <laughs> I feel like we we joked through the whole pandemic, but okay. Like, <laughs> that was real life. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> the Not jokes funny. that we had kept us alive. Like, what? That's you know what you're right. Sometimes that was World War II. No, I'm joking. Not World War II. No, we well that's that's another. (laughs) Right, right. I don't even know why I said that. Anyway, (laughs) (laughs) that could be a real thing. Uh, You know, I'm gonna just say it. They driving us crazy. All right. Anyway, (laughs) goddamn gas. But anyway, the world is is the electric bill. Shouts out to the electric bill. I looked at that motherfucker, and I was like, yeah, "Don't make no sense." Totally different from uh, literally a year ago. But okay, <laughs> what the gas? Because kind of, <laughs> well, why did gas play us? Because gas went up and then it went back down. We was like, "Oh, okay, everything going back to normal," and then it went right back up. And I was just like, "Yeah, yeah I gotta we, go to work." Like, what are y'all? We both live in Connecticut, Lamont. You know, he tried to do something with the tax, but he tried, I don't know. but. I mean, here we are, and gas is almost four dollars. So what can we, yeah, can we yeah. do? Shout out to my people with Cali. I know I see y'all uh, with that nine dollars, but we don't want that here. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> not, I don't know how not, they're doing it. They're not trying to have that here. <laughs> Living in California sounds—it's like scary because. Can you imagine paying five dollars per gallon? Do you know how many gallons your car takes to be full? Yeah. And you paying five dollars each? No, I, no. I'm ca- I'll just call out. It's no point. They're making me cry over there. I'm sorry. I <laughs> just got a little too real. Never mind. Nah, that's all right. Nah. Sidebars. This is what we do. It's fine. You're a podcaster. I, I yeah, really I'm do. very good at, at <laughs> that's kind of what we're known for is just being off topic. <laughs> Yeah, it's sidetracking and the girl like this is a sidetrack to another sidetrack and then and we're gonna go back like, to the main point. Me like, what were we talking about in the at first? Yeah, I'm the queen. I'll I'll do that all day. <laughs> are you are y'all what what what's going on over there? Like so what, I know how's that going? So initially we took a break because we were going into, we worked, we both worked at the same place. We don't both work together anymore, Mm -hmm. but where we worked, it was going to, we thought it was going to be a crazy peak season. It actually turned out not to be, but Mm -hmm. typically during peak season, it gets like crazy. So I know he wanted to take a break because he was like, I don't, that's going to be a lot to juggle like all at the same time. And for me, um, I have work and then also music stuff and then i also have um a a business so i I was like yeah let's take a break like you say (laughs) the word and i'll take a break i need a break so that happened and i think that um after the pandemic i know chris he ended up leaving that job and just kind of went through some transitional stuff and i'm going through a lot of transitional stuff as well just like trying to keep up with just what i already have on my plate Mm -hmm. So we're still trying to figure out when the best time is to come back and how we would come back because there's a lot of things that we wanted to do differently that would make it a little bit more um, doable and convenient for both of us um, in order for it to be consistent. So we're just trying to figure that out. So I'm not even sure when we're coming back, but we have talked about 
kind of playing with the idea of coming back and how that would look. So that's um, to be to be determined. Hey, life is life. You yeah, know, and life is on life transition. regardless. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, so whether you wanted to or not. So right, it's, right. It's, you know, <laughs> does. I actually just spoke to Chris today. I haven't even I hadn't spoken to him in a couple of months. So that just shows you how crazy life wow. was. Like, I just spoke to him today and for people wondering, he's doing well. <laughs> yeah, he's, That's he's dope. Fine. yeah. That's dope. Well, let's let's hope the return comes. You know yeah, what I mean? Big and strong and never yeah. mind. Yo, podcasting know. is dope, man. Like I'll really be is. telling everybody. They'll be like, yo, it's I should funny. start one. I'm like, go ahead. Do yeah, it. I can, you know how many people I, we convinced to start podcasts? One of our other co-workers started a podcast. My sister started her podcast. Oh, um, wow. Some people that Chris knows ended up starting a podcast. So it's, at this point, everybody got a podcast. You might as well start a podcast. Yeah. Why not? Start one, listen to it. Everyone doesn't have to just listen to the tops and all that stuff yeah. and all that money. It's not about all that stuff and all that money. It's about just connecting. It's, and it's I nice thought, to be able to have those conversations. I, I, I really miss those conversations we would have because they you just talk about stuff that you normally wouldn't talk about. And it's it's nice. Yeah. We'll have to figure that out. I don't know what we're gonna do, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. What what um have you so I saw that you had some appearances and stuff like that. How did those play out? Like the first one. So that first one was Pitch My Song. So that was a great event. So mm -hmm. the one, it's still April. So I had two um, events this month. And then mm -hmm. the last one that I just did was, I don't remember what day it was, but it was um, Splitfield. So that was in Springfield, Massachusetts. And it was really dope. It was like a small underground type of thing with just like, um, it was a whole smoking event. So they had vendors that were selling like edibles and just all things related to smoking. I don't even smoke, but I ended up at this event and it was a dope event, but I I was in there like, I think I'm dying. I'm, I'm very <laughs> sensitive to smoke, but I just kind of stuck it out. So oh wow, that was really cool. And then, um, yeah, that was up Wait, in- Wait, where was this again? That was in Springfield, oh. and it was really dope. There are a lot of rappers there, and mm -hmm. again, I also Alicia was also there, so she performed for that as well. And it, yeah, it was it was a quick it was a quick show, but it was pretty cool. And you know, meeting people, networking—that's all it really is. It's just seeing as many faces as you can and just getting to know people. That was a dope event, and I have. Yeah. A, a couple more things that are we're, we're we're in. I'm in talks with people on some events coming up, but the, nothing is official, so I can't announce it yet. But oh, we're yeah, we're that's dope. That's dope. I asked because I was like, wow, like this is this, this is a dope bio right here. <laughs> sure, it's sweet to the point. <laughs> oh yeah, you're talking about um my Spotify bio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I read it while we was playing the song. <laughs> Hendrix huh? from the LaBelle's yeah. Lady Marmalade. She yeah. met Marmalade. I freaking performed with her. She's so cool. She like hopped up on the um on the drummer's platform and she was like dancing and stuff. I was like, she's like living her life. She was, I don't even know how old. I guess it doesn't matter, but she was <laughs> she was giving it all and it was fun. I was I was part of her backup singers. And that was just such a learning experience to just like let loose and mm -hmm. give. And that was, it was really fun. So that was like a once in a lifetime. Yeah, that's dope. Thing. Yeah, that was really cool. That was at the Bijou? No, that was where, I don't know where that was. Somewhere in Connecticut. Because that was a while ago. No, oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know where that was, but it was really dope. It's always good to have experiences like that. It inspires you more. It makes you like, yo, I'm in mm -hmm. the right path. <laughs> <laughs> and I was fresh out of college. I was like super impressionable and I didn't really know what I was doing. So to be like on stage with this woman who sang freaking Lady Marmalade and wrote the song, it's just like, yeah, this is where you probably should be right now. <laughs> Very cool. Artists are always going to be artists no matter what. Right. what. However they choose to artist, it's always different. It's always interesting. And there should be like more respect. You know, yeah. like especially in Connecticut, 
Connecticut really doesn't like original music. They you like know, covers and all that. And like, I hate I okay. <laughs> I will say I, <laughs> but I really don't love doing covers just because I know that a lot of the places, especially in Connecticut, the type of music, because remember, I told you my background in music. I just like random stuff. So a lot of times the music that I want to sing, they're like, we don't even know what this is, girl. Like, what is this? <laughs> it's 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 frustrating. But we have a lot of talent in Connecticut. Um, I wish that we could work together a little bit better out here. But there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of good, like, songs uh, out here. Yes. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's it is. No, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start interviewing a lot of Connecticut artists. You definitely should. And, and I'm gonna ask them: Should we work together more, and why? That's gonna be my question for every Connecticut artist. The answer is yeah, we should. <laughs> it's just the question is not why; it's how. It's yes. like because I mean, we know why. Like it, it benefits us all if we if we work together and support each other more. But it's like, how do we do it with? I don't know. I've noticed in Connecticut, people feel like if I help you with an opportunity, that means I'm losing an opportunity, which is not true, but that tends to be the messaging. So, whatever. That's why I kind of do my own thing and yeah, whatever. We Travel. could be like Austin, guys. We could be like Austin. We could I go on a rant, but I just want to say we could be like Austin, guys. We, we could like play and and sing in beautiful harmony in a circle, and I'll play the guitar, but. But y'all playing, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that could be a total moment. <laughs> I have words, <laughs> but it's all right. That is not <laughs> but yeah, Connecticut's interesting <laughs> as far as the music scene goes. It's I get it. Connecticut is close to New York, so of course you gotta have that mentality. But a lot of New York artists fuck with each other. I mean, that's what I see whenever time I go to New York and stuff. It's yeah. like too. Because we're not actually in each other's way, you know? Yeah. As much as we think we are. I think we all are, from the people, of the people I've met, we're all super different. Like, as far as our musical style, our backgrounds, our taste, how we perform, we're all so different. It's like, we're really not in each other's way. But we just feel like, if I help you, then I lose. So it's fine. We gotta do better, because the last biggest <laughs> artist that came from Connecticut was John freaking Mayer, and he's kind of weird to me. But wait, John right. is from Connecticut. Yes, Fairfield. He's from Fairfield. Yes, that horrible place. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All I have to say that horrible place. That's I it. didn't know that, or did I? I, I mean, don't... Fairfield. I'm sorry. If anybody, look, uh, I have some friends from Fairfield that I knew for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Are you back? I know how I feel. <laughs> I'm not even gonna take it back. Y'all know how I feel. Fuck. It. I don't think I, Fairfield, is, Fairfield is okay. I uh, I haven't spent <laughs> there actually. I can't speak on them. I, I don't know. The movie theater was awesome. That was the best movie theater. Cause all right, so quick story, Sila. There's there's two movie theaters that are next to each other for some weird reason. There's a Bridgeport movie movie theater. And then right behind it is a Fairfield movie theater. It's literally town line right there. Okay. And the Fairfield movie theater looks so gorgeous. And the Bridgeport movie theater just looks wild. <laughs> Y'all gotta stop talking about Bridgeport. Bridgeport is trying hard, okay? Yeah, I mean, I could talk about because I'm born and raised. But anybody yeah. else talking junk about it, I'm gonna have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that most events that happen or most like really anything that happens in Connecticut, a lot of it happens in Bridgeport or like New Haven or something. So you guys at least got some traction yeah. out there. I'm from oh, Waterbury. Yeah. Nothing happens in Waterbury. Nothing good. I, I played some of my best shows in Waterbury. I'll say that. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> Almost you, wherever you've played in Waterbury, it's probably closed now. Let me stop. Never, never <laughs> Shouts out to the art of yum. Yeah, they they moved into the. You know what? Never mind. They moved. Maybe that's why I didn't return my call when I was trying to do an open mic there again. Yeah, no, they don't have. They're in the museum now. It's every it, Waterbury is. We're going through it. <laughs> I don't I know have things to say about Waterbury. 
I used to work for a nonprofit from Waterbury, but I'm really? not going to say anything. Yep. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Waterbury. I don't live in Waterbury right now, but I work yeah. in Waterbury, so I'm there every day anyway. Yeah, so it's yeah. like I still live in Waterbury. And I'm just, every day I just look around like, wow, we're yeah. not doing good. <laughs> I mean, Bridgeport is just as crazy, though. Don't, let, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, they... they they took the Columbus statue down and it was like, you know, put that shit back up. They put it back? They took it down and put it back? <laughs> yeah. So that tells you how Bridgeport is. That is so <laughs> tacky. At least New Haven kept that shit down. Bridgeport was like, nah, put that shit back. <laughs> I want to know who was the one that was like, who took this down? Put that up and went and put it back. After they made this big monumental decision, somebody came in like, who took the Columbus statue down? <laughs> right. And then was like, uh-uh, put it back. I That's like that. crazy. That makes, it's like you almost kind of stood for something, but not really. <laughs> nah, yeah, nah, 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 but that's Bridgeport, though. That's it was Bridgeport, like, LOL, though. JK. Bro, our mayors was, like, the mayor that's there now, he was mayor before, and he's a felon. Like, he got Went, he went to prison for stealing from Bridgeport. And then they all of a nah, sudden got him back. And the other mayor before that was a cokehead. And I, I don't got a problem with cokeheads, but he was using our taxes to pay for his coke habit. So that's what I have an issue with. If anybody want to judge me, I don't have an issue with coke addicts. <laughs> I've heard this story from somebody before. So yeah. I believe you. Um, that's unfortunate. I don't know. <laughs> really sad. Bridgeport always gets a bad hand, man. Always. I feel like any town, <laughs> especially out here, any town can get a yeah. bad rap, you know? Ain't no telling about the crazy stories that I haven't heard of from other towns. I'm just like, yo, Bridgeport just has that star right there. Yeah. Old Bridgeport. <laughs> it's like when you're so close to it, you just know all the, all the hot mess that it is. So you're right. just like, trust me, my town's worse than yours. Because I feel yeah. like Waterbury is a mess, but I will not <laughs> talk about Waterbury anymore. Those are my people, so I'll leave. I'll shout out to Waterbury. <laughs> Wait, sure, what's my sure. oh, I have a button to shout them out. Give them their, give them their one two. Yeah, we're gonna do it one more time. Shout out to Waterbury. <laughs> yeah. Light clap because I, I don't know. I. We gotta do better. When we do better, I'll clap for you, but <laughs> we gotta we gotta do better. Yeah. All right. So wait, what do you where are you at now? I'm in Shelton. It's nothing is happening here. It's very quiet. Yeah. I just yeah. kind of exist here. It's nothing crazy going on. It's very peaceful. Yeah, Shelton's Shelton's different. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Maybe the good thing. <laughs> know anything about this place i just live here i have no yeah. idea what's happening up the street i don't know i used to party here ragers and it's stuff like that. oh hell yeah where i um, feel like i don't remember because those are drunken times i just oh, thought it was kind of like, <laughs> no because shelton is like really shelton is really shelton derby and sonia like yeah. they're all it's all just one big thing so i yeah. really don't i don't know the what valley happened. Valley. Yeah, it's basically it's the valley. It's all just one clump, and then low key Seymour too. But okay. Yeah, Seymour's like, hey, we're here too, but yeah, it's like as soon as you enter, you're out. So. I hate those roads. It's like, <laughs> bro, you can get killed around the corner, and no one will see you. Like, no one would know. No one would know. <laughs> if you drive through Seymour for too long, you end up in New Haven. So. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, how I get okay. no. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll take New Haven. <laughs> New Haven's nice. I like living here. Not bad. Oh, it's... you're in New Haven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody freaking lives in New Haven. Yeah. So... I did that because I decided to, but I realized that a lot of opportunity that I'm hearing around here, that's fucking crazy. Like, even, like, people, like, shout out to Maudita. She was, like, a uh, arts director at a college up in mystic and now she's over here with the arts with the arts and ideas doing mad dope shit like a lot of people come to new haven now it circulates in new haven and it's what's beautiful is that a lot of that's going on with these attractions is black influence it's like black art is straight up like take it over 
<laughs> and there's a lot of food in the yes. like yeah. oh. anyway. Come through. Be I will. one of us. One of us. <laughs> when I was looking to move out of Waterbury, I did check through New Haven, but I was like, what's in New Haven for me? I there it was such a random place to live, but for me anyway. But there's big wise, there. there's a lot, but there's also the cover band influence. But you, there's a lot of good gig opportunities. There definitely are. Um, what's that place called? Blue Rock or Blue something? Stella Blues? Yes. Yeah. I've been there a couple of times. That's a really nice, that's, a, well, it's a nice venue. Shouts out to the Grateful Dead that made that song. Yeah. Uh, we uh, performed there a few times. Yeah. Oh, really? Nice. Uh, so, so what they do that, is they actually like freaking like, um, they be posting on, what is it? Facebook. The Zuck stuff. They be posting on the Zuck stuff and they be like, hey, we need an artist or a band for these such and such days. And then like no way. mad bands like comment like, hey, I'll Art. do it. Pick me, pick me. People literally just get gigs like that. That's how we got a few That's gigs. That's the dopest thing. Yeah. I like that culture. New Haven, nice. I, I, I'm, I'm not mad at New Haven. Lots of opportunities there. Yeah, yeah. I, I just people. wish, you know, I just wish. Wish what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I guess I have feelings about New Haven, like how you feel about Waterbury. <laughs> every town, everybody, every town has its flaws. There's really, you got to just take Just it talk with, about that. <laughs> just take it with, for what it is, man. I could go on so much rants <laughs> about New Haven, but we'll let it be. Let it be. Uh, yeah. Damon, I've, I've heard, I've heard some stuff about New Haven. <laughs> I have been. Oh, I have my God. Been. Verify, so I won't talk junk. Yeah, yeah, until you verify it. And I want to hear it because I'll be like, oh, for real? Yo. But that's I do crazy. Know, <laughs> the music scene out there is yes. pretty good. Music wise, yes, they're doing it. They're yeah. doing it. I hope and they get like Austin real soon. They have potential. It's just live bands everywhere, every fucking day. Yes, like, and a lot of black influence, so I'm here for it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Afro beats, especially. I need that. <laughs> uh, I'm not mad at so, them. So, TK, we are almost at the hour. Um, that was a really quick hour. Yeah. Yeah. That was fast. I didn't realize what time it was. I literally glanced up. Like, you just talk. Right. Right. So, I hope what we had discussed was very uh, interesting, guys, because <laughs> if it's not, it was interesting to me. So, whatever. <laughs> check out check out T TK at. Uh, all platforms, all Thank platforms, plat like everything, Spotify, um, Apple, wherever, wherever you uh, listen to your music. All things. And you make sure you hit that like button on um this video. Hit that like button on friend for friend to a friend podcast as well too. It be like, yo, what's up? Not yeah, it force up to put <laughs> content on again. <laughs> Come <Come back>. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that put a smile on your boy face. It'd be like, yo. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I see that. Chris, I know he would love to come back. We just have to figure out the the, the details of it. Yeah, yeah, that would be dope. That would be dope. Thank you so much for coming on and taking the time to talk to me as well, too. Cause that's that's really awesome. And yeah, I wish you the best in your music career because you have a lot of good. You have you have a you have two good like great singles that I heard, and those Thank those you. are dope. Those are dope. Collectively transforming community. And our human family Volume and unity Divine light shining individually Collectively transforming community Peace in our human family As above, so below, feel the pain in my soul, the rep he'll dissolve. Organized, no matter the cost, politicians start wars, they don't fight, they sit in the poor. And nothing lasts forever as long as we stay together, give hell to the masses, watch the unity rapture. This is for the kids and the culture, it's one love, one growth, one light, light warriors. All right, oh.
didn't know if I was supposed to hang up or what. <laughs> 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 